Today's job is to install the bilge pumps for the cargo hold here. Now in all four corners of the cargo hold here, we have built in sumps for pumps. And so we're gonna put a pump down in that hole. It'll collect the water out of this area and pump it overboard. And there'll be water in here frequently because equipment will come in through the cargo hatch on the crane and get washed down in this area. We've even installed hot, cold, and salt water uh, lines into here to wash down equipment. Uh, a lot of electronic equipment coming in like ROVs and things like that, especially with open exposed motors like my ROV has. It needs to be flushed off with uh, fresh water and that keeps the salt from crystallizing on the, the motors and so causing problems later on. And so we wash it down goes to one of the corners depending on how the boat's rolling and gets pumped out. So there's two inches of foam insulation in here. And I just got to make little wedge cuts and I can put it back in when I'm done with this. Got to cut all the glue because we sealed it really good so that no air can get back into the hull. No air back in there, no condensation, no condensation, no water collection, no water collection, no rust. Nice thing about these tools, you can change the direction of the blades. It makes it a little easier to get into the tighter spots. And I love just taping the Allen wrench to the cord because it's always there. There we go. So it's the through hole fitting we're putting in. This is the retaining nut on the inside. It's all PVC plastic, so no rust on it. And our hole needs centered right there. That'll let it see it where the hole should be from the outside of the boat. Oh, yeah. And we're putting it that high up on the hull because waves will come past there and we don't want water being taken on by that hose. There's a check valve in the line, but no point in using the check valve if you can just keep the water out of it to begin with. This is butyl tape. It's soft and gooey and it kind of stays that way. So it makes a good sealer around fittings that'll be exposed to water. Three more to go. Now a little about bilge pumps. They're good about picking up water, but they're not good about picking up crap. And uh, one of the interesting books out there is the Bounty, The Sinking of the Bounty. Not, not the first one, the first one burned by the mutineers, but the second one that was built for the movie sank. And one of the problems they had while they were sinking was crap floating around and getting into their bilge pumps. They probably didn't have that much cedar shavings on board, but you know, a loose rag or a sock or something like that. And it didn't take much to jam up the pump that's trying to do its job. Now, we're a steel hull, so we've got some advantages over their wood plank hull. Okay, we're gonna do a test here. So I'm gonna measure how much water is coming out of my hose every minute uh, by measuring a five gallon bucket here. Pumps are also measured in gallons per minute or gallons per hour. So I've got five gallons and, uh, wow, 30 seconds. So five gallons in 30 seconds means in 60 seconds I'm getting 10 gallons. I'm getting 10 gallons per minute of flow out of this hose. That pump is supposed to be able to do something like 40 something gallons per minute. And sure enough, it's easily keeping up. Now it's measured in, I think it's 3,200 uh, gallons per hour, uh, 60 minutes in an hour says it should be able to do 53 gallons per minute. It looks like it's able to do that. Now you've got to reduce that number by how high it has to push the water. Yeah, the reason why every foot of that is about a half PSI. So two feet, you got a PSI. So more pressure that the pump has to lift. The number of 
elbows in the circuit as well as the dimension of the pipe also plays a part. A lot of people think that when you're lifting water up, and it's kind of weird, they think if you have a smaller pipe, you gotta lift less water, but that's actually a bad thing. If you have a bigger pipe, you have less friction because the friction is always around the inside of the pipe. And so the larger pipes, less friction. The water, it's pressured down is not related to how much there is in the pipe. It's related only to the height of that. And that's a really good flow switch system. I like that. The ones that swing freely on the wire, they get jammed up a lot. Float switches on these are fixed, so they're on this rod, and as the float sw floats up, it pushes the rod, turns the pump on, as the water level goes back down, the weight of the float switch pulls it down, pump turns off. And then we installed the check valve, too, to make sure that when it does turn off, the water in the pipe doesn't come back down and add to the flooding inside the sump again. Otherwise, the pump would cycle more than it actually is now. The wiring is really simple too. This is the float switch, and so it's easily replaced with another one. And this is the pump. Once the float switch is activated, the pump would have power. As soon as the float switch gets all the way down, it cuts off, no more power to the pump. You watch that check valve do its job. See it open up, and when the pump shuts off, that flap closes back down, trapping the water in the hose. So all this water on its way out doesn't reverse back again. You can see air bubbles traveling up through it. I like it. So with four pumps like that in here, we'll be able to wash down stuff with something more equivalent to a fire hose, which is kind of what we have. We have a hydraulic pump that can pump seawater through a two inch line to wash down equipment if need be. I really don't want to be doing that in the cargo hole, but if we have to, we'll get the water out. Uh, this is the kind of bilge pump you'll normally see on smaller craft. And they're good pumps, but don't take that 1,100 gallons per hour is anywhere near the truth. That's only the truth if it's having to pump the water just straight flat, not lifting it at all. When it lifts it this many feet, it'll have a loss. There'll be a chart along with it. It'll say something like it'll do uh, zero gallons per minute at 16 feet, which means it can lift the water 16 feet, but you're not going to get any volume through at 16 feet of lift. So at eight feet of lift, you might get oh, I don't know, uh, you know, 20, 30 gallons per hour, really low. So these things get cut a lot, depending again on the how many turns you send them through and that sort of thing. So check the chart and then cut it by half. All right, 11 feet of head pressure. And 11 feet at about a half PSI per foot, that'd be about five and a quarter PSI that it's having to use to force that water up there. Yeah, about there. That's five gallons. So about five gallons per minute at 11 feet of rise. That'll certainly do what I need for the showers and sink. And if we lowered it down, it would pump more. If we made it go up, it would pump much less. And the other thing to make sure about your hose is make sure you don't have a, an S-bend in it or a trap in it. That'll give you an air trap. Let me show you that. Okay, so I have this loop down here. It has some water in it and air above it. And if I put the pump in, I can see the level of the water right there. The pump is on and running, but it can't do anything because what's happening is it's, it's having to compress the air in this section of the hose and air compresses, but it won't lift it. So the water level is right there and I can hear the pump staggering. So no sags in your hose. You gotta let the hose only run uphill. Even a check valve will leak a little bit and allow some air into the line. So that's not a good solution either. Now, with the hose completely empty, put it back in. There it goes, it's already passed here and it's on its way up. I got pumps like those small ones designed to just pump the water out of the shower, but the shower is only two gallons per minute, so not much. Okay, all four cargo hold bilge pumps are in and uh, gonna be working on the rainwater collection system next. Already got that in progress. And a thank you to everybody who's been supporting us. We appreciate it. You can do that through PayPal or Patreon. And if you are interested in uh, buying something from our overpriced junk store, you gotta, and you're in Europe, or you're not in the United States, you gotta do it 
now because we're going to close the store down we're going to only sell merchandise through amazon and amazon doesn't ship overseas now a fair warning it costs a fortune to ship overseas so you can buy like a 20 dollars t-shirt or 25 dollars t-shirt ended up paying 35 dollars for shipping so thank you very much if you're interested in doing that uh, if you really wanted to support us though and you don't need the the thing then a buck a month send us any donation you like we'll put you on a mailing list that'll let you have our videos about a month ahead of time it depends on how many videos i have like right now there's five or six that are i think there's five that aren't out and you'll see the videos ahead of time you also see them ad free so thank you for your support if you can't afford it don't do it just wait they'll come out on video soon enough patience man if you don't have patience you don't need to be building a boat like this and don't forget to send us a picture of whatever it is you are building what did you make today thanks guys appreciate it